uh, excuse me, a year, which translates out to about seventeen thousand five hundred dollars uh, in today's money. Not spectacular, but it's enough. Uh, he wanted to get married to a lovely lady named Laura, and, but could not because uh, her father wouldn't hear of it because she wasn't wealthy enough. Um, and then he goes to see his good friend named Trevor, who is painting someone or is a very, very good artist and a professional painter. That brings us up to date. So what I'd like to do is begin starting with paragraph 5 and work our way down. Okay? Let's see. Would anyone like to start? Yep. yep. Who says yep? Was that Tommy? Uh, or was yep. that uh, Terrence? Or was that Tommy? Servant. 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 <laughs> I'll tell you what. Tommy, you first, and then Servant, you do the second one, okay? Uh, actually, I didn't hear your instructions. Please. Okay. Please what I, simply put, I want you to read this paragraph, mm -hmm. and I'll bring it down to mm -hmm. here, and then um, once we're done with that, we'll talk about it a little bit. Now, some of us don't see the screen as well as others, so I'm going to raise the screen a little bit, and I'm hoping yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a little, okay, that is just enough. Okay, Tommy, uh -huh. would you like me to read first and have you read, or do you want to just try it on your own? Okay. I think I'll, I, won't, I won't read that. So okay. One, which one? So we're starting right here, Tommy. Which one? Oh, when? Yes. When Huey. Okay. When Huey came in, he found Trevor putting the finishing touches to a wonderful. To a wonderful life-size picture. Yeah, a life-size picture of a bigger. Bigger himself was standing on a raised platform in the corner of the room. He was a tired old man with a light face and a sad expression. For his shoulder was thrown to a rope and coat, all turned and full of holes. His thick boots were old and mended, and with one hand he lay on a rope stick while with the other he held out his old hat for money. So he held out his own hat for money, um, okay. and, and he was a, a beggar. Okay. Anybody have mm. any thoughts about this paragraph? I have a question. Yes, for Ken. What is old torn and full of holes? Old and full of holes? Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Um, Old and full of holes. Would, would anyone like to help him, or do I have to, or do I get to? Okay. What we're dealing with is the clothing, his coat. Now, you got to remember, England gets pretty cold in the winter. Now, his coat, what he's wearing, is probably many, many years old. Uh, he mm -hmm. may have bought it 25 years ago. Oh, and my God. You know, and, and it's got holes in it. He's got to sew it up all the time. Uh, and it's not adequate to keep the cold out. Okay. Really poor guy. All right. Other questions? Other, other thoughts? Okay. Now, we're getting a, a funny feedback, I think, from you, Tommy. Let me try muting mm -hmm. you for a minute, if you don't mind, and see if that stops it. Um, and if that's the case, I'll just call on you. Um, with questions and just unmute yourself when that time comes, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. Yeah, Tommy, that one was yours. All right. Now, let's go back to Servette. Yeah. Okay, what I want you to do, please, is do this. these two paragraphs. They're relatively short. Yep. Go ahead. What an astonishing. What an astonishing model whispered Hoogie as he shook hands with his friend. As astonishing model shouted Trevor at the top of his voice, I should think so. Such beggars are not met with every day. God heavens, what a picture Rem, Rembrandt, Rembrandt. Rembrandt would have made of him. Okay. 
What an astonishing model, whispered Huey as he shook hands with his friend. An astonishing model, shouted Trevor. I should think so. Such beggars are not met with every day. Good heavens, what a picture Rembrandt would have made of him. Okay, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Uh, Servette, what do you think? I don't know what are they talking about, really. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, do you know what the model is? Yes. Okay, good. Do you know what astonishing is? Yeah, like... Astonishing? Like amazing, maybe. Amazing. And the model is the person who is posing for the picture. So Huey says, this guy is an astonishing model. Okay? Are, are you with me so far in that? Yes. Okay, now let's go down to, I should think so. Such beggars are not met with every day. Meaning, this person is a very, very rare person. He was very lucky to find him to use as a model to paint the picture. Okay? Does that help you, Sivet? Yeah, but why do, you, why do they say it like beggars? Okay, a beggar, darn good question. A beggar is someone, as they say down here, who lives by asking people for food and money. Yes. What, what you have to understand is at this time in um, the history of England, there were many people who were making lots and lots of money and others who had no money. Uh, they, they, they sat, they, they begged for money, and every once in a while people would give them some. And that's how they ate. And they couldn't get jobs, and they didn't have families. You see? So somebody like Huey, who could have been a beggar, uh, gets money from an aunt, but this poor guy gets nothing. Does that help you, Servette? Yes, yeah, so the picture, uh, the, the, uh, the model is the beggar? The model is a beggar. Basically, um, Trevor, the artist, went walking through the streets trying to find someone who looks like a beggar. And he found this one, and he hired him to be the model for the picture he was painting. Okay. Okay? Good questions. Good questions. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. All right. Lena, can you do these three paragraphs, okay? Starting with poor old man. Lena? Lena? Okay. Siphon, can you do those? Yes, sure. Hello? Uh, Siphon, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Poor can old man. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Poor old man said, Hui. How miserable he looks, but I support to you, Pandas, his fit is fortune. Certainly, replied Trevor, you don't want a beggar to look happy, do you? How much does a model get for being pent? Asked Painted. Hui. Painted. Thank you. Asked Hui, as he found himself a comfortable seat. Okay, so tell me what's happening in these paragraphs. What, what is Huey thinking? Oh, anybody, anybody. Okay. Say who it's you like, are, okay? Who was that? I think I think we found a new sticker which which was he was comfortable with. Okay, so Huey is very comfortable. He's sitting down, he's looking. Yeah. Um Terrence, what do you think? Terence? Uh, uh, yes, Kevin. Um, I uh, sorry. I I I wasn't paying too much attention because I have a noise uh, on my uh, headphone. Oh dear! Oh dear! That's not good. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry. So, are, are you okay but now? Uh, you, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Now, now, now oh, it's good. perfect. Good. Good. So what 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 I understood that you were explaining in, in advance. That uh, this uh, this uh, artist Trevor is looking is uh, taking a, a stroll on the street and he's looking for some model, some man who who he can use as a model and he, uh, he finds someone 
who has uh, an, uh, a a rank coat very messed up, and he thinks he can maybe could model for him. And what a picture uh, Rembrandt could could made of it. Right. So Rembrandt, I, yeah. The but great I couldn't artist, understand yeah. the last part. Okay. I, I, I couldn't understand. All right. So it says here, poor old man. How miserable he looks, but I suppose to you painters, his face is a fortune. So he's saying, this guy is an old man. He looks terrible. He looks sad. Yeah. But an artist who paints will make a lot of money based on that painting. You see? Yeah. A, li a, a, a little cynical. Would you say that? A little, yeah. Yeah, I would say cynical. Cyn uh, cynical. Yeah, cynical me, because... Yes, yeah. Sorry. Now, how, how do you think, uh, on top of cynical, somebody like uh, Trevor regards the poor? What are the poor... Because... Yes. Hmm. No, because I think that in some way he's trying to take advantage of the misfortune of this old poor man thinking in his own purpose. Just, I, don't, I, I don't care how pitiful is this guy's life. In order, if I can take advantage in, to paint a beautiful pain. Okay, guys. So, so Terence, thank you, Terence. Terence says that this guy is basically an object uh, to be painted. Um, Trevor, the artist, simply takes advantage of this man's poverty to get a good picture. Is that about right, Terence? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts on that? You said they don't, uh, this man don't get anything. And in this paragraph they say, like, you don't want a beggar look to hap look too happy. Right, so that's right. why they don't pay him money? or Well, they want him to look miserable, but the model does get paid. That's why he's here. But let's see how much he gets paid. And that's what it says here, as, as uh, Siphon read it. How much does a model get for being painted, asked Huey, as he found himself a comfortable seat. So, Is here we go. I, uh, what's that? You want uh, Becca as uh, his model, but yeah. he doesn't know how much to pay yet. Yeah. But, and here uh, we go. Yeah. A model is yeah, going to act like he's really happy. Yes. So... The paint, uh, Servette, go ahead and these paragraphs 11 through 14. Okay. A shilling an hour. And how much do you get for your picture, Alan? Oh, for this I get 2,000 pounds. Well, keep. Well, I think, go ahead. Well, I think the model should have a share. Cried Hoogie, laughing. He works quite as hard as you do. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at what 2,000 pounds is in American dollars, bringing it forward uh, over the, the couple of years. 2,000 pounds is $170,000, okay, in today's dollars. And I'm going to have to do the math on this. I did it once. One shilling is roughly six, uh, one-twelfth of a pound, okay? So what we do is there's 12 uh, shillings in a pound. This guy gets probably about uh, $10, $10. Uh, Trevor's getting 170000 This poor beggar's getting about ten. So who's taking advantage of whom then? What do you think, Servette? But the, In other words, the, go ahead. I don't think nobody is taking advantage. The beggar gets his money and the artist gets his money because beggar without artist cannot make even $10. Right. Uh, but he is giving him his time, isn't he? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the painter yeah, is painting. Sure. What's that? Yeah, sorry, sorry, Kevin. Uh, I, I was saying that this beggar is giving to the painter not only his time, he, he's, he's giving the painter his face, his craves, oh. 
how how does he looks? You know what I mean? All all his misery, all 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 the feature, all the feature of his yeah. face. So, so he's I giving him. Yeah. Okay. Go on. He, go on. He, he he's giving he's giving him more than an idea. He's giving he's giving him he, the, he's giving him all, all all his life. You know what I mean? I do. I do. All right. So um, yeah. The painter take advantage from the beggar. So you say the beggar's taking advantage. Now, Servette does not. Um, how about some other people? And, and Servette says the guy wouldn't even have a job if not for the painter. And Terence says, well, the painter wouldn't have anything to paint if not for the beggar. No, but uh, a good artist can find lots of things to paint. But if you give me this, fa this uh, beggar, probably I wouldn't. Make an paint that worth two thousand dollars. The talent belongs to the paint painter. Okay. Now we have a topic for tomorrow's debate class. Or actually, <laughs> Saturday's debate class, and it goes like this: Is it appropriate for an employer to pay as little as he possibly can mm. to an employee for labor? Okay. No. Um, now, Servette, you, well, let's take what Servette said. If not for the employer, the employee would not have a job. Okay? No, 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 no. But that, that. We're not going to have that discussion today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have it Saturday. <laughs> we'll have it Saturday. And I'm looking forward okay. very much to it. Um, let's see. Servette, you've got a position. Terrence, you've got a position. Um, Lena, who do you agree with? Servette or with Terence? Nina? Okay, for Ken, Servette or Terence? Terence. Terence. Okay, Oliver, Servette or Terence? Um, I really don't know. Can you, do, can you resume their position? Certainly. Um, in this case, the beggar is getting an incredibly small amount of money to serve as a model for Trevor the artist. Trevor is getting an incredible amount of money, lots and lots and lots, and the beggar's getting very little. Servette says, well, if not for the painter, the beggar wouldn't have any money at all. Yeah. And Sir, um, Terence says, well, he's taking advantage of the beggar because not only is the beggar giving him his time, but he's giving him his face, who he is. So I yeah. raise the question, and this is a very, very strong, important or proper or even intelligent for an employer to get as much labor as he can out of an employee for the lowest possible rate, lowest possible salary, okay, wage. What do you think? Well, I think that all have us some kind of limits. Okay. Um, Saifan, what do you think? Saifan? Mm. Yes. Uh, do you um, agree with Terence or Servette? I agree with Terence because that uh, picture or the, that painting is going to uh, okay. have the longest. Okay. Um, Tommy, how about you? Yeah, I do agree with Terence. You, you agree with her, okay. Uh, Nyong, how about you? Okay, we're going to have a debate <laughs> on Saturday. Uh, we will take the position of Servette, who says a person is lucky to get money at all when somebody hires him. And Terence, who says, but there is, if you try and get as much as you possibly can out of someone, you're taking advantage of this person. So I'm raising yeah. the question. Should and is an employer justified in getting as much as he can out of someone? Okay? Um, is that right? Is that proper? Is that even intelligent? Okay? And there are definitely two schools of thought on it. Well, okay. You just, don't, I don't want to argue it right now. <laughs> I just want to know your position. <laughs> Debate class is where we argue it, and we'll talk about putting together ideas. Okay. Well, I, I I always I have to disagree because I'm not 
in favor of the slavery. Okay, okay, okay. We're, we're not talking about that right now, okay? Get, get your thoughts together. The Saturday debate class, come, be part of it, okay? That's where we'll talk about it. Servette, you seem to be on your own here. Mm -hmm. um, see if you can track down Mauricio. Mauricio is always good to take a yeah. side. Do you, do you know Mauricio? Yes, I know, of course. Okay. See if you can get him. See if you can get him to help you. Uh, you need to have at least one ally here because they're all ganged up against you. <laughs> Mauricio's here. Oh, Mauricio's here? Yes, yeah, he's listening. All right. Great, great, great. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Now, let's go back and let's continue with this because Oscar Wilde certainly has his own ideas. All right. Now, uh, let's see. Stravet read the last one. I've had Terrence read. Terrence, have you read Terrence? No, I haven't. Okay, what I'm going to do is I want Terrence to read next, and then I would like for Ken to read. Okay, so Terrence, do these two paragraphs, 15 and 16. Oh, okay. Uh, nonsense, nonsense. Look at the trouble of lying on the pain and standing all day in front of the picture. It's easy, Huey, for you to talk, but you mustn't talk. I am busy. Smoke a cigarette and keep quiet. After some time, the servant came in and told Trevor that the frame maker wanted to speak to him. Very good. Okay. For Ken. Okay, this is kind of long, but I don't think you'll have a problem with it. Go ahead. Okay. Don't run away, Huey, he said as he went out. I will be back in a mo moment. The old beggar took advantage of Trevor's absence to rest for a moment. He looked so miserable that Huey pitied him pitied and him, yeah. felt in his pockets to see what money he had. All he could find was a pound and some pennies. Poor old man, he thought. He needs it more than I do, but I shan't have much money myself for a week or two. And he walked across the room and slipped the pound into the beggar's hand. Okay. So, in this, the, uh, the painter clearly agrees with, with uh, Servette on this. I mean, I'm the yeah. one who has to stand in front of the easel. I'm the one who has to paint. I do the creation. The beggar just stands there. Um, does, is that about right, Terrence? No, I think the painter is a despot, a tyrant. No, 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 no. I'm asking uh -huh. you to summarize the paragraphs. We'll oh, deal yes, with the yeah, despot yeah, yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. Go on, sorry. sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, I, I agree with your summarize of the paragraph. Okay, okay, good, good. And and you believe that the painter is not fair? Is that correct? Yes, yeah. that's correct. Okay, great. That, that's all I want to know because I'm going to give you time. Um, <laughs> And, and what I'm going to have to do is limit the time everybody speaks at the debate class. Okay, for Ken, look at um, what happens. Tell me what happens in paragraphs 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. Huey goes away and Travers, Travers is not there. Huey looks the beggar and he understood. He has no money and he needs money. He deserves it. Okay. So he gave him to... A little bit money, I think. Yeah, basically, he gave him a pound. He gave him a pound. Um, when does anyone know how much money a pound is in percentages? Like two dollars. Yeah, it's a little, what? little more than a that. Little bit. Um, if if we, uh, it's basically five percent of um, of what he makes. So if we multiply, and I'm just going to do it on my calculator here. So who is also so gen generous? Uh, apparently so. He's not paying him for anything, certainly. But times 0 0.05. This shows painter is more generous than yes. who he. he but is, the article yes. shows who is like a generous person and painter is stingy. And is stingy. Um, he's basically giving the model $85. Eighty-five dollars. Um, that's not bad. <laughs> so, so Huey, in spite of himself, is a generous man. All right. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can get Lena again. Lena, are you there? Lena, uh, her microphone must not be working. All right. Let's go to um, Jet. Can you read this, Jet Young? Yeah. Uh, I, I have a question. Sorry. Certainly, certainly, Oliver. Uh, could you? Put the uh, 18 paragraph, please. 
paragraph 18? Sure. When, when, he, when he say, but I shan't have, what does it mean? No, oh, I shall not. I shall not. I shall not. not. Oh. I will not, yeah. Okay. Um, that's, it actually is appropriate now, and some of our lessons use that. But I will tell you that if you say, I shan't have that in America, they won't know what you're talking about, or they'll think you're a snob. In England, it's okay, as far as I know. But in America, don't use that. All right, good question. All right, anybody else? We know what pity is, right? Yep. Okay, Oliver, what's pity? When someone pities someone. Uh, when you feel sad for somebody or something. Yeah, you feel sorry, you want to help somebody. Okay, very good, very good. All right, Chia, any, go ahead with paragraph 19, please. The old man jumped, and a faint smile passed across his cold lips. His cold lips. Thank you, sir, he said. Thank you. Then Trevor arrived, and who he left. A little red in the face at what he had done. He spent the day with Laura, who was charmingly cross. That cross, he yes. That he had given away a pal and had to walk home because he had no money for ten swap. Okay, tell me, Siphon, what do you think has our young? What do you think has happened here? Tell me what you think. Me? Now we're not dealing with the guys whether or not the beggar is um, being taken advantage of. We're, we're going beyond that. What do you think? In this case, tell me about Huey. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I want I want Chiat to say it first, okay? Tommy, I'll, you'll get your second chance, okay? Chiat, go ahead. Chiat? That's mine. What do you want? I'm sorry? Sorry? I didn't understand you. No. So, what did you ask me about? Uh, well, you've read these paragraphs, okay? Yeah. Having read the paragraphs, tell me what happens in them. Yeah. Maybe the old man, uh, the old man uh, said thank you to the painters, and and then uh, travel arrives and. Now remember, Trevor is the painter. Huey is the friend. And Huey is the one who felt sorry for the beggar and gave him money. And quite a lot of it for, for Huey. So, what did the old man say? Old man say thank you to... Uh, okay. yeah. yeah, he doesn't get much kindness. Okay. Now now tell me about Laura, his girlfriend. What is Laura like? It says she was charmingly cross. What do you think? So Laura is a girlfriend of Huey or Trevor. Of Huey. Hmm. Uh, Huey was a little red in the face and Laura was charmingly cross. What do you think? Hmm. I don't know. Okay. When someone is, um, let's go, I think Terrence, so, no, no, Tommy, you had some ideas. Tell me what you think. Me? Yes, you. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we want, uh, I want to talk about Laura. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I about Laura? What I does think, that say? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Go on. I'd like to say that Laura is imagination from Charming with Crohn's. It seems like. Uh, she feels she feels much confidence and then looks gorgeous with it because I can get that from the word charmingly close. I think. Okay, that, that's that's an expression. Let's go down here and see what it says. Mm -hmm. She's angry or annoyed, angry or annoyed, charmingly cross. So so she's a little upset with him. She's a little upset with him for giving away mm -hmm. his money. Uh, do you, do you think that's right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now Trevor is a little red in the face. 
What do you think that means? He's embarrassed that he cannot pay the baker. Yeah, he's embarrassed. He gave away money he really didn't have to give. So he's kind of embarrassed about it. And Laura is a little unhappy with him because he is showing kindness to a member of the lower classes. And he's a member of the upper class, even though he's poor. All right, Oliver, it's your turn. Paragraphs 21, 22, and I'll have you do 23 as well. OK? Uh, well, before that, uh, yeah. why did, uh, did you say that a pound will be like, I uh, don't know, $180? the a pound well he gave it's you'll, you'll just have to trust my math on this <laughs> Good. No, it's not it's not the, it's not the 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 normal pound the England a British pound, pound yes the British now, pound? yes now what you've got to understand is I went back to figure this out to the 1800s and I brought ah you mean I, a pound in that time yeah, it was worth a lot more ah, than a pound yeah. in this time. Good, yeah, yeah. So a well, British pound is a, yeah. A dollar in that time was more more money. Too. Yeah. So yeah, that that means when I brought it forward, everything forward, I I brought the pounds forward, then I converted the pounds to dollars to give you guys an understanding of how it all works. Yeah, you, you I think it took a few minutes to do the math, but but yeah, you ask a good question. Anybody else questions? Uh, I, and I have a, a petition, please. Sure. For, for Tommy, uh, mm -hmm. since that that he is not speaking right now, could you mute yourself because you made some very big background noise at least in my in my okay. headset. Okay. Yeah, there there is some background noise, Tommy. Uh, you and know, and, and it's hard to concentrate you. in that way. But yeah, if I, you if you have to speak something or, or say something, you can mute yourself when you want to speak. Great idea. Yes. <laughs> Tommy, do you understand? Yeah. I will think it's my first time. Yeah. No, no, yeah, it's so. fine. It's fine. It's okay. We all have that. So we'll mute you for now, and then when you want okay. to say something, unmute yourself, okay? So, yes. All right. Uh, great. Good. Thank you. And that's if you have a question or anything, anything at all. Okay, Oliver, go ahead. From paragraph 21. Okay. Uh, that night, he went to his club at about 11 o'clock and found Trevor sitting by himself in the smoking room. Well, Alan, did you finish the picture all right? He asked. He asked. He asked. He asked. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> finish and frame it, my boy, answered Trevor. And by the way, that old model you saw has become very fond of you. I had to tell him all about you. Who you are, where you live, where your income is, what hope you have. Okay, good. All right, so so Oliver, what do you think? What what happened in this paragraph? What does that tell you about Trevor and Huey? Uh, well, it seems like Trevor finished her uh, his painting, so he's happy with that. And but maybe Trevor is not so happy because. <laughs> Uh, or say, uh, maybe Hugh is not happy because Trevor say a lot of things to the beggar for about, about him. Yeah, Ab about Huey. I mean, he, he asked him questions and Trevor told him pretty, pretty much his life story. All right. Um, Lena, are you there? Uh, teacher, what does yeah. uh, Huey, do? Huey do? What's his job? Huey has no job. If you remember from the beginning of the story, he tried a few things, but he can't do anything. So he's living off of the money his aunt gives him. Okay. I was in the class in the first side. Oh, okay. Well, there, there, he, he doesn't do anything. He's tried, but he can't okay. do anything. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Sufet. All right. Lena, how about you? Um, what about what? Okay. I want you to read I'm paragraph. sorry, because, yeah. Do Which paragraph. One? Paragraph 24, and um, I'll find a line because paragraph 24 is quite long. Go ahead, my dear Alan. All right. All right. Uh, my dear Alan, cried Harry. I shall put, uh, probably, probably find him 
probably probably find him waiting for me when I go home. But of course, you are only joking. Okay, here we go. You go ahead. Go on, go on. Yes, go ahead. I wish I could do something for him. I think it is terrible that annoying anyone should be so miserable. I have got piles of all clothes at home. Do you think um, he would like any of trees? His clothes were falling too big. I'm sorry, I have a question. What is um, uh, fields? Could you say that again, please, dear? What does it mean, fields? I don't know if I am pronouncing the correct uh, Oh, piles. E piles. Piles? Uh, piles. Yeah, remember we got the E there. Makes it piles. And a pile um, would be a mound. So let's say you've got something. In, in this case, Huey has clothes, and he have lots of them. So he might have some of them on the floor, and he's placed one on top of the other, one on top of the other. And, and what he's saying, it's kind of an idiom. He's saying, I have lots and lots of clothes at home. When you have piles, you have lots. So mm, much, yeah. you don't know what to do with them. Okay? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Good. And now let's take this last paragraph. Would you please, Lena? Yeah. But he looks. Um, but he looks uh, wonderful in them. Say, uh, I, I can't see here. Uh, you can't? Yeah. You can. yeah. Uh, but he looks wonderful in them. Say, Treble. I will never want to paint him in good clothes, but I will tell him of you, offer. Okay. Again, Trevor Trevor says, you know, I've got this model, and, and if he actually looked good, he wouldn't be a good model anymore. Okay? Well, you know, so we, we kind of know what Trevor's like here. So let's take a look at some of the main ideas of this story. And we see, we have a number one, that um, the first thing that happens in the story is Huey goes to see Alan. Now, let's see. Uh, Tommy, what's the second thing that happened? Mm, number two. Maybe. He gave the beggar a pound? Is that what happened? What, what happened when he first went to see Alan? Alan? Alan Trevor was doing something. Do you remember? Painting a picture. Number three, Trevor was painting a picture. So five is the first one, three is the next one. So he was painting the picture, and you see? Um, okay, go ahead and mute yourself, and we'll find somebody else. Uh, Oliver, what happened after he was painting the picture? Oliver? Number four. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Number four. Trevor stopped painting to speak with a frame maker. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chiat Nong, what happened next? Mm, number two. Number two. Huey gave the beggar a pound. Okay. Very good. For Ken, what happened after that? He went to see Laura. To see Laura, and she wasn't happy with him. And finally... Terence, number the last one, number six. Uh, n number one, he, he went to his club and saw Trevor again. Very good. Yes, exactly right. So you've got this sequence in the story. All es right. Excuse me, Kevin. Yes, yes. Yes, I think the painter, uh, the painter is a little, is a little snob. <laughs> is a little what? A snob? A yes, snob? he could be. Yeah, yeah, he was. He's. The American expression is full of himself. He thinks a, yes. he is a wonderful person. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, let's move on. And those of us, for Ken, could you do number one, please? He lived on a year from his out. How mm. much did he get? You remember? Mm, according to dollars, eighty thousand right. dollars. Right. I don't remember exactly for the pounds. Maybe two thousand. Two hundred. Two hundred. Not a whole lot. Two hundred pounds a year from his aunt. 
Okay. Now, who else was here the last time? Was that Siphon or was that Servat? Who was here? No, I wasn't. You were not. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me do this one then. Huey could not marry Laura until he saved 10,000 pounds. Okay. Uh, 10,000 pounds would be roughly a uh, million dollars. Roughly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Liked him well so enough, but he had no money. So it's not going to happen soon. Highly unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe and, he, will. he need to find another lady. Yeah, let's, More let cheap. Me, yeah, a, a rich lady. Actually, I'm sorry. It's it's not it's um $85,000. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh $850,000. That's what it was. Not close to a million. But same idea. All right. Uh, let's see. Who should I pick on? Who should I pick? Siphon, number three. Prince will earn 2,000 pounds for his picture of the baker. That's right. Uh, Lena, number four, please. Uh, uh, travel base, his models. I don't know. One or shilling. One, one shilling? Yeah. Basically a twelfth of a pound. All right, one showing for one hour of work. Yeah, doesn't pay him very much. That's what we need to know. And uh, Tommy, number five, please. I forgot to answer. Maybe something he said. What did Huey give the beggar? You remember? Some, no, I don't remember. Okay, who would like to help him? A pound. A pound. A pound. Uh, which, yeah, about eighty-five dollars, which which is for Huey quite a lot of money. Okay, thanks, Tommy. I, I see that you muted yourself. That's great. Okay, now uh, let's ask some questions, and I'm going to start. Let's see with uh, Terence, number one. What do you think the differences between a painter and an artist? <laughs> uh, because be, because a painter is an is an artist in 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 itself. Not uh, necessarily. Not necessary. No. Because it, we, we are talking about a painter who who exists who exposes his paintings in art galleries, or we are talking ab about a painter who pa paints walls and blocks of walls. There you go. Okay. Well, how about this? And, and Oscar Wilde was suggesting that let's say somebody like me I can't hold a brush to save my life and I try to paint a picture I don't paint it particularly well but there are people who paint extremely well who really capture something like a, a Rembrandt or Leonardo da Vinci or um, even Andy Warhol who had some really creative ideas yeah. what's, what's the difference? There's there's some people that made the things better than any other one. Okay, uh, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. All right, let's see. Juliet uh, Nyong, number two, please. Why why doesn't Alan Trevor pay his model more than the shilling an hour? Maybe I don't know exactly, but now maybe Trevor is a a mean person. Is what? I'm sorry? A mean, a mean person. He, he could mean. be a mean person, but he seems rather nice. Um, Maybe it's the price of the market. Okay. That, that's the market. That's what, that's what models go for at that time. No, be, I, I don't agree with that because I don't know of the existence of any uh, Beggar's Union. Okay, there is no Beggar's Trade Union, that's for sure. Trade Union, yeah. Yeah. But the market had a price for everything anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay. The debate's at Thursday. <laughs> the debate Saturday. The debate Saturday. This is good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oliver, number three, please. Why does Hughie you think the beggar will be waiting for him at his house? Because the conversation with the travel at the club. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, Huey feels that because he gave the beggar something, 
the beggar is going to want more. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Now, this is where we're going to get to the important part. And these are themes in literature. What I want for Ken, will you please read this first paragraph? Okay. And then we'll read the second one, because this is where we're going to talk about next week. Okay. All literature, whether it's a poem, short story, or novel, reflects an author's own views on society and the human experience. Themes are usually generalizations about life or universal topics such as love, money, beauty, honesty, and happiness. They also may represent an author's own values or conclusions that are based on his or, or her own personal experience or observations. Very good. Okay. Oliver, do the next one, please. You mentioned them requires you to... You to look for deeper meanings in the text. Authors do not explicitly state their themes in their histories. Instead, stories, yeah. instead, readers must infer the themes by analyzing the plot and the characters of a story and identifying what the characters and plot suggest. It's characters. 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 Yeah, good. The characters and the plot suggest about the author's viewpoints on life. Go ahead, Oliver. Sometimes an author will promote or support a particular kind of behavior, attitude, or idea about a life. Other times, an author might suggest a behavior, attitude, or idea that he or she disagrees with. Very good. Okay. We have actually begun this discussion. We were doing a lot of this all the way through. But Wilde has three separate themes. Generosity. <clears throat> Alan uh, is is rather greedy. Um, he is not generous, and Huey doesn't think that's a good thing. You see, what does this suggest about Wilde's opinion on being generous? So let me go around. Let me ask somebody. You saw this. What did you think Oscar Wilde felt about generosity? Was it a good thing? Was it a bad thing? What? A very good thing, I think. Okay, Oliver, a very, very good thing. And actually, we can see the same theme on the Happy Prince. Ah, you've read the Happy Prince. Okay, good. Yeah. With the bear that take the eyes and other thing of the prince to give it to the poor people. Oh, very good. Well, we won't deal with Happy Prince, but yes, yes, it's the same idea. The Happy so, Prince had to give everything away. So it's the same opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and so... What does that tell us about themes of Oscar Wilde? Terence, what do you think? What, what does this say that Oscar Wilde felt about generosity? Okay, when we talk about the theme. What do you think? Okay. Sorry, I I I was on, on, on mute. What <laughs> what I think is is like the 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 beggar is going to take advantage of the generosity of the of 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 Hughie. Okay, now you think that's what the beggar is going to do, but what yeah, does I this, think. Yeah, but what does this say about the author Oscar Wilde? What did he uh, think no, I, about generous people? I think I will add. I, I don't know because I, I would like to read detail to the end to know okay. the, the, what, yeah. the, the, the whole body of the text. But at the moment, I think I think uh, uh, Oscar Wilde uh, shows more empathy for for Hughie than for Alan Trevor. But I'm not sure. Okay, all right. That that's reasonable now based on you don't know the rest of the story, and I will have to find. I was actually searching for a link when you guys logged in that will give us the story. All right, let's move on. Uh, thank you, Terence. Now here's the theme of compassion. Uh, Lena, are you there? Lena? Yes, I'm here, teacher. Okay. Go ahead and do number two, please. Theme: compassion. Mm -hmm. Think compassion. How does Huggy show compassion toward the bigger? How do you think Will feels about being compassionate toward others? Um, I'm sorry, but uh, during the reading I didn't hear. So 
Okay, well, you, you have to figure this one out. It didn't tell you directly. Did First of all, did Huey show compassion towards the beggar? Yeah. What, okay, what did he do? Mm. What did he do to show compassion? I don't know. Okay. Did he give him anything? To show compassion, to show compassion, he did something. He did something. Okay. He gave the beggar money, didn't he? That's what he did. All right. Okay, so what does that say about Wild himself? Did he think giving, giving is a good idea? What do you think? Mm, maybe sometimes just give money to any to other people uh, is not good because sometimes I'm not. I don't know. If, I'm not sure if if you are asking me about I'm that, asking you what Oscar Wilde thought. Not you. This well, is where we're coming yeah. up with a theme. What do you think Oscar Wilde thought about it? Mm, Oscar Wilde. I don't know. Well, again, Hugh, you don't really know yet, but, but Huey did something that Oscar Wilde probably approved of. Now, let's, let's pull out of this and let's talk. First thing. Uh, we're running out of time, but if anyone wants to uh, read the story, I've put the link up so you can get the whole story, which I think is All a right. great story. So that there it Thanks. is. Sure. Um, the other thing is now you have an assignment. You have homework, and this is for our next class, the same time next week. I am going to want you to write a short story. It doesn't have to be very long just a couple of paragraphs but I will want you to tell me a story and it can be anything you can do it something like Oscar Wilde you can do um, a story about an animal that lives in the woods you know anything anything I don't care and what we're going to do is perhaps talk about themes in that story one thing I want to stress very strongly about themes often the author does not know himself or herself what the theme is. So if Oscar Wilde was writing about compassion and all that sort of thing, he was just writing. He didn't think about it. He just wrote. And many writers are the same way. We, you and I, look at stories to see what they're all about. The author doesn't think about it. Okay? Now, let's, let's open it up and talk about some questions. Does anyone have any questions for me or um, about the story, about the happy prince, which someone was talking about, um, English, or whatever you like, or America? Okay. I have a question. Certainly, if you can. In the text, uh, it says, the falling to bits. What does it mean? Falling to bits? Let me, let me take a look at it. Do you remember where that appeared? His clothes falling a bit, I think. Oh, his, are you talking about his clothes? Yes. Mm. Oh, in other words, the clothes are so old that they're falling into pieces. Again, oh, pieces. you're getting an idiom, but his clothes are falling apart even as he is wearing them. You see? Yes. Him? Yes, yes. Who's next? Uh, sorry. What we have to do for the next week so is bring the resume of a short story yeah just bring a short story that you write have it ready I'm going to ask you to read it a story that I already read all your own story all, all my own story that Make I it write a, that you write yes that you have written or that you will have written by that point. But I don't get it. It's a story that for of an other person of or my own making. What you make up the story. It is your story. 
So, so, so I have to to write my own story. That's right. Okay. We've talked about writing and what they look for, and as for Ken says, it's your imagination. A story that I write for me will be very different from a story you write for you. You see? I have I have two questions. Certainly, Savet. Uh, in a story, fairy tale story, uh, the Snow White said she committed herself to heaven and fall asleep. What they mean, committed herself to heaven. In other words, she put herself in the hands of God. When you commit yourself to heaven, you say, God, it's in, you know, I can't do it. I'm relying on you. So when she commits herself to heaven, she knows something bad is happening, but she falls asleep. And that's her prayer. Okay, thank you. Okay. And so to speak, when do you say so to speak? So to speak? Mm -hmm. You are making some sort of comparison in language. So you're saying, uh, how can I describe this? You're using a turn of phrase that may not be used, but you say, I am applying this phrase specifically to this purpose, so to speak. Hmm, okay. Okay. All right. Others. Others. Good questions, guys. We lost Lena. Uh, Tuyet Nyong, how about you? Anything? Yeah, no. No? no? Yeah. Okay. Tommy? No, that's already not. Okay. Terence? Uh, I have some prejudice about uh, Oscar Wilde. Okay. And I, am, and I am really looking forward to read the end of the tale in order mm -hmm. to get a an insight of the history, you know, because I have some prejudice from, from the behavior of, of Oscar Wilde. And sure. I don't, at the moment, I don't know if he's going uh, to play uh, in favor of the beggar mm -hmm. or if, he, or if he's, he's going to play in favor of the, of the painter, because I think he was more to the painter's side in his real life than to the beggar side. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And, and that's one of the reasons I put the link up, so you can read the story. Uh, Chet is leaving. That's uh, about that time. But yeah, go on. by all means, pull that link and find the story. Oliver, how about you? Uh, what? Do you have any questions about what we're doing? Any oh, other no, questions? No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Uh, for Ken, how about you? I asked my question. You asked your question. Good. And now, my friends, it's time to go. We're at the end of class time. I'll be teaching again later. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank I'll you. see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, Kevin. Thank you.